Ladies, I have a terrible disease today. White's not my color. <laughs> and they don't make ivory in nurses' uniforms. So if you can notice the dark circles under my eyes, they do stand out very much when I wear my white. One day when I, after I'd gotten off work and had gone to the mall in my uniform, and as I was walking down the hallway at the mall, this little boy came up to me and went, ma'am, are you a nurse? I said, yes, I am. How did you know? And he so proudly said, because you have white shoes. <laughs> and for 22 years, I have had the privilege of walking the road with sick people. And it's been a very interesting road. There are days when I think the whole world is sick. And I take care of sick people all day, and then I go home maybe to sick children, and up all night with sick children, and I go back to work to sick children. I think the whole world is sick. And in America today, we're very concerned about our bodies. We want to have healthy bodies. Now, I want Mrs. Evans to have the healthiest body in the whole world. So she needs to do everything there is to have a healthy body. But we don't eat fat. We don't eat cholesterol. We don't eat salt. We eat high fiber. Blah. Uh, if you can tolerate it. And we exercise, we brush our teeth, we floss our teeth, we get our eyes checked, we do all those, sometimes those yearly checkups that we don't even like because they're important, and we get checked up, and then you check your children up. And you get all their checkups, and you feel so overdosed on checkups. Now, you don't have to worry about your husband because they don't believe in doctors, they don't go to doctors, and they don't get checkups. So. You only have to think of yourself and your children in this hectic schedule of checkups. And yet, there's something even more important than our healthy bodies or our sick bodies, and that's our spirit. How many of you have a first aid kit in your home? You have the, well, it might not be a big black medical bag, but you have that box or someplace where you throw all the leftovers. You know, leftover cough syrup, the, the, the thermometer if you can find it. How many of you have a place like that? And when you hear that cough during the night, you get up and you run to that first aid kit and Dr. Mom takes the cure to that little room where her loved one is and she wants to have a healthy person. My mom's cure was cod liver oil. Do you know I hate fish to this day? And if you were well, you only got one spoon full of cod liver oil. If you were sick, you got two. We were the wellest kids there ever were. And I always drank milk after cod liver oil. I really think that was the wrong thing to do. I thought that would make it go down easier, but I don't know about that. And yet, here we are with our healthy bodies, they're checked up and checked over, and we, ha we have sick spirits. Depressed spirits, lonely spirits, bitter spirits, fearful spirits, and what do we do? Stay sick. What we need to do is run to our first aid kit for our spirit and get help right away when we see the first sign of a festering sick spirit. One day, when my little Ruthie, she's seven now, but when Ruthie was four years old, we were going into the college one day, and out came a crew of cheerleaders, and they had their beautiful uniforms on and their pom-poms, and... Yes, ma'am. And they had, she loves ponytails that bob as you run. And the cheerleaders were running out and, and I noticed them but didn't think much and all of a sudden I felt a, mommy, mommy. And I said, what Ruthie? And she said, mommy, do you know what I wanna be when I grow up? I'm thinking, well, she wants to be a mommy already, a teacher and a missionary. Well, no Ruthie, I don't know what else, what else you wanna be when you grow up. And she said, when I grow up, Mommy, I want to be a cheer lady. <laughs> and I laughed, tried not to let her see me laugh just like you did. And I thought, 
isn't that sweet? I said, yes, Ruthie, someday you'll be a cheer lady for someone. Then I wondered if, I wondered what kind of cheer lady lives in her home. I wonder what kind of cheer lady she's going to watch so she can be just like that cheer lady someday. And I got pretty miserable because I think Grumpy comes to our house some days. I don't just think, I know it. And I wondered, do they think not a cheer lady lives here, but a grumpy lady gets, lives here? And my spirit gets sick some days. And I get tired. And I come home tired and I think, okay, kids, you've been there. Just shut up and just read a book. Do something, be real quiet. I want to be a cheer lady when I grow up someday. So does your cheer, does your spirit bring cheer to your home? Or are you convicted like I was that my spirit sometimes isn't what it should be? And so when I feel signs of a sick spirit, then I have to run to my first aid kit. Turn in your Bibles with me to Proverbs 18, 14. Proverbs 18, 14 says, The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. Now, let's put our names in there. I'm going to say the spirit of Chris will sustain my infirmity, and you put your name in there, and let's read that verse together. The spirit of Chris will sustain my infirmity. I didn't hear your names. Let's read it together. You say your name. The spirit of Chris will sustain my infirmity. Now, I don't know what your infirmity is today. You know that. It might be cancer. It might be physical pain. It might be crippling arthritis. It might be a wayward daughter that's pregnant right now at home that couldn't come to Spectacular that you're heartbroken over. I don't know what your infirmity is, your heartache, whatever it is that you have in your life right now that's your infirmity, but you're still, no matter what infirmity you have, you're still a cheer lady to somebody. Now, I think Mrs. Evans, she's an important cheer lady. And I think, oh, Mrs. Evans should do everything she can to have a healthy spirit because she's important. And I think of Mrs. Hiles. Now, that's a person... She's got an important job to be a cheer lady to a tremendous preacher. But you know what? Mrs. Hiles can't come to your house preacher's wife over there in Iowa or down in Nebraska or up in Maine and be the cheer lady to your husband. She's got a full-time job, I promise you. But you need to be the cheer lady that you're supposed to be. And Mrs. Evans, when I'm grumpy lady at my house, she can't come over every time and fix fix my spirit so that I'm the cheer lady I'm supposed to be. So your spirit is so important because no matter what your infirmity, no matter what your heartache is, you are the cheer lady to somebody. Somebody calls you mama. Somebody calls you nana. That's our word at our house, nana. And for some of you, you're the only cheer lady that they'll ever know. You're the most important cheer lady that they're ever going to hear because you're going to bring the cheer to them. There's a little boy that comes to my, Sunday, my five-year-old Sunday school class on Sunday, and he cries every time he comes in. And he'll say, Daddy, don't leave me. And I'll often have to go out and help him come into class. And he'll cry the first few minutes, and I'll say, How are you doing? And he'll say, Mommy and Daddy don't live together anymore. And I'll do everything I can not to cry. And he'll say, they fight all the time. So I live with my mommy sometime and I live with my daddy. And I think his cheer lady's gone. She got a sick spirit one day. She didn't have a first aid kit ready for her spirit. She might have gotten all the checkups she needed to get to have a healthy body. But she quit being a cheer lady because her spirit got sick. And so for one hour a week, I get to be his cheer lady. 
So I'm important to that little boy, and you are important to somebody because for someone, you will be the only cheer lady they may ever have or ever know. So now, sit up straight. I'm going to open the black bag. And in it, the first thing, now, you'll have many things in your first aid kit for your spirit. Things that I have, I won't even mention. And I'm going to just mention a few that I think are very, very important to your spirit and to mine. And the first thing is your Bible. And I don't understand this because Miss Evans has said it for 18 years that you can't do without it, but I don't think we believe it. And I don't know what we're gonna, what, it, what it's going to take. And I, I feel sort of stupid. I, I'm, I'm thinking they're all going to think, yeah, there's the Bible again. Haven't we heard that in these 18 years? We sure have. It's basic life support. Boy, when somebody's not breathing, I know exactly the first thing I'm going to do. And when my spirit is sick, this is the first thing I'm going to do. Now, you're not, maybe you're not in the Bible. Maybe your infirmity is so heartbreaking to you. Maybe you, you're so weak you can't. Maybe you could get one verse. Maybe if you're so hurt, you don't know which way to turn. And you just don't even know how to think. You could get Psalm 119, 165. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. And that's all you'll, maybe you'll just take that one verse and get a verse, and through this heartache and through your infirmity that you don't feel you can withstand or you cannot even bear it any longer, you can, you can be the cheer lady you're supposed to be because you've gotten a verse. And you, it's taken you through your infirmity. And maybe your infirmity will never, will not pass. We say sometimes this too shall pass. Maybe it's not going to pass. But you've got to have your basic life support your Bible. The second thing in my first aid kit here is good, healthy music. Fill your first aid kit for your spirit full of good, healthy music. So Ephesians 5, 19 says, speaking to yourselves, I love this, because this says you can talk to yourself and you're not crazy. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Now, I like to whistle. I think making melody in your heart is whistling or humming, but you're not crazy. You can sing to yourself. You can talk. It doesn't matter if you can keep a tune or not, because you're, see, you're, here's what you your spirit needs help. And you're driving down the road thinking about, I just don't know how I can take it. I don't know how I can take it. But if you're driving down the road singing, you're not thinking about how you can't take it. And your spirit is going to get stronger and healthier. I love in 1 Samuel 16, it says, when King Saul heard the music of the harp, the evil spirit departed. And Saul was well. And I think, how many times does music help heal your spirit? And see, what you put in your mind is going to be revealed in your spirit. You're telling us, everybody, when, when your spirit is sick, you're telling us what you've been putting in your mind. If you don't get to your first aid kit and start getting some healing for it. Our father-in-law, my father-in-law, Dad Grafton, died, went to heaven in May of this year. And we flew to California. And... And it was a very hard time. It was a very hurting time. I, heard, I had a very hurting heart and spirit at that time. But my family needed their cheer lady. And so we, we got a song. And that song was, I'll see you again. I'll see you again. I'll see you in heaven someday. We sang that song almost every hour. Our family would gather somewhere at the hospital bed. Just, uh, just hours before he died, we sang that song to him. Oh, we cried. We were hurting. Our spirit was hurting. But we sang, and we sang, and our spirit started healing. And I knew I needed to have a strong spirit to be the cheer lady my family needed. 
we went two hours early to the funeral home and at the coffin we stood there and sang I'll see you again and we sang it and you know what I started to believe it now I know he was I already did believe it that he was gonna be in heaven he is he was saved but the more I sang the more my little seven-year-old Ruthie would sing I'll see you again we started to believe it and our spirits started getting healed and now when someone sings that song in church, we all go, and Ruth, you go, our song, Mommy. It's our song. So maybe, maybe you'll get great is thy faithfulness. Maybe you don't know how your daughter, when you get back home, is going to face this unborn child, or how you're going to face it. And maybe you'll take the song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. You'll get a song and get it in your heart and sing it and sing it and talk to yourself until you finally believe it and you know what all of a sudden your spirit you're gonna find that your spirit is getting healing and the cheer lady's back the cheer lady's doing her job because her spirit is healthy look at Proverbs 18 14 again let's say it out aloud together the spirit of Chris will sustain my infirmity the second, third thing I have in my first aid kit is adhesive tape. I call it shut up tape. And I keep it real handy. And when my spirit gets sick and gripey and complaining, I use it. I try not to advertise how sick I really am. And see what some of us would rather do is make our, we'd rather get a song called I Love to Tell the Old, Old Story over and over and over again. That's not the song you need to get. Sometimes you need to run to your first aid kit and shut up tape come right out and put right over your mouth so you quit telling the old old story of how, what a failure you are what how awful things are because the more you hear it it reinforces how bad you think you are and your spirit is not getting healing your spirit is getting sicker and then what is amazing to me is we would rather tell anybody our problems and advertise all our family sins to everybody to anyone who will listen rather than going to the very person who not only wants to listen but has the power to do something about our problem about our infirmity see our spirits gonna sustain our infirmity and so our, if our spirits not strong we're not gonna be able to sustain the infirmity we have and then we won't be the cheer lady that only you can be to someone so we've got the Bible in our first aid kit we've got healthy music, lots of music. We have shut up tape right there. Handy at rolls of it, keep stockpiles of it. You know, some of you stockpile toilet paper, stockpile adhesive tape. So we can be strong in spirit and have a healthy spirit so we'll be the cheer lady that we're meant to be. Then, the last thing I have in my first aid kit healthy TV let's see if there is such a thing let's see how that helps my spirit first of all we'll look at the soap opera update now I'm wanting to heal my spirit I, I need to keep a healthy spirit so I need to decide if this should be in my my first aid kit for my spirit soap opera update as the world turns, Craig and Samantha made love after he expressed his commitment to get a divorce from his wife. Well, that probably isn't what will help heal my spirit. Let's try General Hospital. You know them? You laughing girls don't laugh now. This is, tells on you. Felicia told Mac that she's pregnant, but unsure whether he's the father or not. I'm sorry, but the soap opera update is not going to help me keep a healthy, strong spirit. 
and it won't help you. And we won't be the cheer lady we're meant to be. Psalm 101 verse 3 says, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. So, I don't know, I'm going to have to think about this TV, whether or not it's healthy enough for my spirit. Let's look at the movie guide. Yes, movie guide free. I don't even have to pay for this. Adult situations, language and violence and nudity. They list for me what I'll, my choices are. And so I could even choose those choices, but I don't think those choices fit in my first aid kit for my spirit. Or I could try some talk shows and learn all about abuse and incest and homosexuality or uh, mothers that let their own daughters have sex in their own home why that's so right for, their, for them. I can't afford to have that in my first aid kit for my spirit. I can't afford to listen to OJ TV. I can't afford in my spirit to hear how people are murdered in detail and who did what and when and where. That hurts my spirit. And I'm not gonna be the cheer lady I'm meant to be. When seven years ago, before Ruthie was born, my husband decided, he decided without my vote, that we weren't gonna have a TV in our house. He wanted to protect my spirit. I really didn't appreciate his protection. <laughs> but I said, oh sure, well, whatever you think. And in my wicked mind, I thought, you're not telling me that I will never watch TV again. And now, seven years later, I'm glad that he cared enough about my spirit to take the TV out. Now I'm thanking, now I'm saying, you're so wonderful. Because it helps me to be the cheer lady I'm supposed to be. And when you're sick, physically sick ladies, it's very easy to turn the TV on. It's just there. You don't feel like reading. You don't feel like singing. You don't feel like doing anything. It just entertains you. But it is hurting your spirit. It is causing you to have a sicker sp Your body's already sick, maybe. But it's causing your spirit to be sick. And there's no way that you can be the cheer lady you're supposed to be for your family, for your Sunday school class, for your bus route, for whatever. And we say to our children, don't eat junk food. Oh, don't eat that. That's junk food. And yet we turn the TV on and watch junk food videos, junk food TV. You can fill yourself full of that. Doesn't hurt you at all. It hurts you a lot more than that sugar hurts you. And you'll have a lot more health problems than you will eat, taking junk food TV than you will sugar. Because your spirit's going to be hurt. See, you can't control. In Proverbs 18:14, it says this, the spirit... My spirit will sustain my infirmity. I can't control my infirmities. I can't control my hormones, my midlife crisis. You're, you can't control your grown children. You can't, there's so many things you can't control. But you can control your spirit by having your first aid kit ready all the time. Now take out your Band-Aid. Yeah, I mean, of course. What else would a nurse have but a Band-Aid? How many of you already put it around your hang nail that you tore off earlier? Okay, you weren't supposed to, you were bad. Take out your Band-Aid. Now, if, you, if your Bible's open to Proverbs 18, 14, that's where it should be. And open your Band-Aid, being good girls, doing exactly what you're told. Put your Band-Aid in your Bible. Stick it in your Bible. Yes, we're going to take those pages and put dirt in it, I guess. Miss Evans says you can have a dirty Bible, so I guess we could put a Band-Aid in it. Put a Band-Aid in it. Let's read that verse together again. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. I, I can't hear you. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. Let's put our names in it. Read it. The spirit of Chris will sustain my infirmity. Now you need to make a decision. I think you do. I think this is so important. I think there's some ladies here that they might decide. I, I'm sure in a group this size that there's some ladies here that are thinking about, I don't care if I'm a cheer lady anymore. Maybe you're thinking about saying, 
I'm tired of being a cheer lady. Let some Sunday school teacher one hour a week be his cheer lady. Your spirit is hurt. It's very sick and unhealthy right now. And on that Band-Aid, I want you to write a decision. Maybe your decision, what did ever decision the Lord has worked in, has spoken to you about? He spoke, I have so many, my Band-Aid's so full. I'm starting on the back side. Uh, but write, what decision is the Lord speaking to your heart about? Maybe it's be a cheer lady. Mine, here's what I wrote on mine. I wrote, be a cheer lady, not grumpy lady. That was one thing I knew I really want to be and do. Maybe it'll be get a verse. Maybe your infirmity is so... Oh, so, so painful right now. You don't know how you can take another step, but you can get a verse. Maybe it'll be get a song. Maybe it'll be no TV. Maybe you've not been as nice as I was and said, sure, honey, whatever you say. Maybe you're just fighting all over with it. Maybe you'll need to write no TV on your Band-Aid. Maybe it'll be no soap operas. Maybe it'll be I'm going to get a first aid kit for my spirit and have regular checkups on my spirit. I don't know what it will be, but somebody in here will make the difference. Mommy, Mommy, do you know what I want to be when I grow up? No, what do you want to be? I want to be a cheer lady. Yes, someday you will be a cheer lady. And so are you.